right, we are back for another question, or two, or three, or four, uh, from the mock final. Here we're at question 26. Um, the point x comma root 3 over 2 is on the unit circle in quadrant 2. Find the x coordinate of this point. <laughs> okay, so it's negative 1 half. And we will see that shortly. Um, what do we know about points on a unit circle? We know that if you take the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, you square them, you add them together, you get 1 every time. Okay, And quadrant 2 means that we have a negative x-coordinate. Quadrant 2 is over here. So we've got the negative x-axis here. So every point on the unit circle in the negative in the quadrant two uh, has a negative x-coordinate. So let's just uh, solve this over here. For x, and we'll keep the negative root. So square root of 3 squared is 3, 2 squared is 4, that equals 1. Subtract 3 fourths over, 1 is equal to 4 fourths. Subtracting 3 of them gives you 1 fourth left. Then we'll square root both sides, keeping in mind that we have a plus and a minus there. Square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. That's because the square root of 1 is 1 and the square root of 4 is 2. So we have x is either the plus or the minus 1 half, but only the negative 1 half puts us in quadrant 2. The positive 1 half keeps us in quadrant 1. So it's negative 1 half. Okay. You should have this one memorized, right? That's one of those ones that should just be clear in your mind already uh, from the very beginning. Uh, I still want to see some of this work. But at least it lets you... At least it lets you um, know the answer from the get-go. All right, so question 27. Nice short one. If sine of an angle is negative and cosine of the angle is positive, then the terminal side of the angle is in which quadrant? So I'm going to throw it right here. Okay. Um, well, sine is negative. Remember that in the unit circle, at least, the sine of an angle tells you the y-coordinate. So if the y-coordinate is negative, that means we must be down here somewhere in quadrants 3 and 4. Okay, now if cosine is positive, what does cosine tell you? Cosine tells you the x coordinate. So if cosine is positive, that means you must be in either 1 or 4. The, the overlapping region here is, of course, region 4, quadrant 4. That's the only quadrant where both sine is negative and cosine is positive. So, quadrant 4. Okay. All right, next question. Identify the graph f of x equals 4 cosine of 3x. Okay, first of all, um, the amplitude is the absolute value of this 4, which is 4. So it's not b. b has an amplitude of 1 fourth. Um, it's too short. Next, the period is equal to 2 pi over the multiple here, 3. That's 2 pi over 3. That's the period of cosine. 
Uh, looks like this one has a period of 2 pi over 3. Um, this one has a period of 6 pi. This one has a period of 2 pi over 3. So it's, it's not this one. It could be either of these. Now which one's cosine? Well, we're just going to pick a point and we're going we're gonna to see. What is cosine of 0? Cosine of 0 is 1, which means we should be at a height of 4 at the very beginning. Here we're at 4. Here we're at 0. This is a graph of sine. This is a graph of 3 sine of 3x. This is a graph of 3 cosine of 4 cosine of 3x. Okay, so it's C there. <coughs> a pretty effective way of determining graphs, right? Just using known characteristics of these things uh, and then whittling it down, if you will, and then uh, checking a point or two. We'll do 29 and then we will uh, go to the next one on another video. 29, express 36 degrees in radians. So if you have something in radians or, or something in degrees and you want to go the other way around, uh, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, from degrees back to radians, you're going to multiply by pi over 180 degrees. The other way, if you have something in radians and you want to go to degrees, you're going to multiply by 180 degrees over pi. Okay, so just whichever arrow you want to follow, that's, that's how you do this. We have something in degrees, so we're here, and we want to go along this bottom arrow to radians. So we're going to multiply by pi over 180 and then we'll simplify. So the pi is still there. Uh, the degrees are going to cancel out essentially. Uh, and now we just need to figure out what 36 over 180 is. Um, so uh, this is 9 times 20. 180 is, right? And what is 36? 36 is 9 times 4. Right? So the 9s will cancel. And what is 4 over 20? Well, 4 is, well, it's, it's 1 times 4, right? And 20 is 4 times 5. So this is pi over 5. Okay, and that's it there. All right, and I'll go to another movie for the next set of problems, but there's not too much left, so I'll see you in the next one.